and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. So a lot has happened since my last episode. Um, for one, I moved in and settled in to a place of my own, so yay. Uh, and also, there was the first week of my flight controller training. Um, so there were a lot of classes, a lot of meeting incredible people at NASA, and also a lot of this. So yeah, a lot of incredible things to see and do here, but let's slow down and take a step back. So if you didn't notice, one of the more unique things about our first week were all the tours. So our instructors took us on these tours to kind of familiarize ourselves with Johnson Space Center and everything that's here. Plus, you know, I guess it's kind of cool to see a giant pool filled with an ISS mock-up, but <clears throat> you know, whatever, it's fine. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these places. First, there's a Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility. This is where there are mock-ups of our vehicles like the entire ISS and the shuttle, so that astronauts can train inside to get a feel for them. And then there's Ellington Field. This is sort of like JSC's airport. Here, we house a lot of different aircrafts, including the T-38s used for astronaut candidate training. Then of course, the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, or the NBL. So there's another ISS mock-up inside the pool, 6.2 million gallons of water. And along with some scuba divers, the astronauts get all suited up like they would in space to simulate how microgravity might feel like. And then there's my home, the Mission Control Center. MCC houses multiple thickers, or flight control rooms, like the Apollo one, the real-time ISS thicker, and the newer room, where I'll likely be starting. Hey, a girl can dream, right? But our first week was a lot more than just a bunch of fun tours. We also had classes to take as well. So for the first week, our classes were mainly kind of a general overview and introduction to the ISS. Um, things like the core systems, which is everything that we need to consider when we're flying a giant space station. So we also learned a lot about the ISS architecture in the modules. So the main modules of the ISS are, from back to front, the service module, the FGB, Node 1 and Node 3, uh, the US lab, and then heading up the front of the ISS are the GEM, Node 2, and the Columbus module. So the two main Russian modules are Zvezda and Zarya. But wait, that wasn't in my list, right? So it turns out almost every module has a second name. So Zvezda and Zarya refer to the service module and the FGB, respectively. So some of the other ones. So, node 1 is called Unity, node 3 is called Tranquility. I mean, let's be honest, have you seen the cupola? Who wouldn't be tranquil looking at the Earth through that? The lab is called Destiny, node 2 is called Harmony, and then JAXA's gem module is called Kibo. Okay, pop quiz, were you paying attention? So, if I wanted to go to Unity, where would I be? Got your answer yet? If you said node 1, you'd be correct. So we also learned a lot about the science on board the ISS, and not just the experiments, but the actual physiology of what happens to an astronaut's body. So on Earth, the human body is used to gravity pulling us down, and so our organs and our insides kind of make up for that. So what happens when you take the gravity away? Turns out, a lot. Things like a blood and fluid shift in your body, bone density loss, etc, etc. Just a million different things that we take for granted here on Earth. And that includes a lot of different tasks. So, let's say I wanted to drink out of this glass of water. <sighs> Pretty easy, right? Well, if I was on the ISS with this cup, it'd be a whole lot messier. And spacecraft systems and water? Not very much, friends. So there's a million and a half things we have to take into consideration about how exactly do we do this in microgravity. One of the more heavier subjects of our classes was the responsibility of becoming a flight controller. 
So if something were to go wrong with the ISS or any spacecraft, mission control is the first line of defense and it's a serious undertaking. We spoke a lot about the Columbia and Challenger disasters and what we can learn from those things to move forward. Probably the most important thing was vigilance, one of those foundations I mentioned last week. To never get complacent and always speak up because even though we haven't had a loss of life disaster in a long time, who knows what could happen next. Well, that's all for this week. Be sure to check out Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter for more updates. And be sure to check out the first episode if you haven't already. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week and for many more as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week.